Donald Marshall's case opened so many eyes and brought so much awareness to our to make Moggy. I can't speak of him without thanking him for going fishing in that August of 1993, because without that, I wouldn't be able to be who I am today, and my family wouldn't have been shaped the way they are today without without his bravery. Donald Marshall, along Charles Rowley, got off Donna Jigo, Bakken Kihila, and you um saw the Supreme Court, um, Madeline Winnegar, he got acquitted for um fishing eels and sailing eels out of season, and that's when uh, the Marshall decision was made, and all the bands, when I out of me, and we all went fishing because we had the right to do so. I think it, I mean, I get goosebumps doing it because I'm a fisherman as well, and I wouldn't be anywhere in life if I wasn't a fisherman. I built my house with fishing money. I take care of my kids with fishing money. It's, that's about what I do, and it's all, it all, it's all thanks for Donald Marshall Jr. Roa. What Donald Marshall Jr. did is open some doors uh, for the better, for the Mi'kmaq people, you know, to get to exercise their rights. He's helped us in many ways. Not only gave people food for their fridge, but it also gave them some good moderate living, especially with the commercial fishermen. I think he opened up a gateway for everyone. Even before Donald Marshall, Pictolan had quite a huge number of uh, core fishermen. So Pictolan has kind of been fishing a long time. So it's pretty important that we continue that tradition. My grandmother told me her father would be bringing lobsters to the shore and it was her duty as the oldest sibling to start the fire on the shore and then it would cook all the lobsters that came in and the community would come down. I think it's just who we are. We always shared what we caught and for the community. Me and my dad used to go uh, fishing salmon and um, we used to go at like midnight on the little skiff there and we'd uh, go check our net and We'd, we'd catch salmon there in uh, Merrigamish Harbor. Yeah, I remember that as a young kid. Going out in the boat early mornings with the old man, fishing lobsters, you know, that's got salt water in my veins. No, I will get out set to the I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the very young age. We're, we're tired age. My old man taught us how to hunt and fish. My father was proactive. He, he always fished. He hunted, so it was organic for us. Me and my siblings, we kind of grew up into that kind of lifestyle. They taught me everything that I know. They taught me everything from how to spot a moose, to gutting, to butchering, to cooking, to providing for our community members. They taught me how to fish, uh, what time of the year is the best for what type of fish. I fish a lot of eel with my father. I grew up dealing with him quite a bit, and I just recently got back into it myself. He made his own wooden boat and the flat front there so he can lay on it for spearing. And I would always take him up the brook there, up Sutherland's River Way, around Malagomich to uh, eel, to spear. My uncles, a lot of them fished salmon and bass as well. My family, both are fishing families, my mom's side and my dad's side. My dad would would have a license and he would have a fishing license for smelt. I'd be eight and we we would have to gut hundreds of smelts, right? So I learned how to gut fish from seven or eight. My grandfather on my father's side, he would also lobster fish. So it's a long tradition of fishing on both sides of my family. But the earliest memory I ever had was eels. When I was about four years old, my grandfather baked some eels traditional way they call it fossil. It's very similar to kabayaki in Japan where they take the eel, split it in two, dry it and bake it or barbecue it or something. But I remember being four years old, trying that fish for the first time and I just fell in love with it. My uncle Simon, he took me out fishing when I was about seven years old and I caught my first codfish. And uh, he told me, when you catch something, you have to eat it. And that ended up being my favorite fish to eat, pretty much. My father always told me stories about him growing up, being taught how to go eeling and fishing. And I love that that was passed down to me from him, and I like to share it with my kids growing up. He died when I was quite younger, so I haven't really practiced it until my kids became my age, where my father took me, and like this winter, 
our school program is doing a lot of uh, outdoor mentoring and we took a lot of the kids Elon this year and it was great to be able to pass that knowledge down to them. It's good because uh, I can opt you, so I know what to do, okay? and right now, that's, right now we have to teach the younger people how to, how to hunt, how to fish, because nobody else is going to do it right now. So I like teaching my kids that. I take them diving for uh, quahawks and I take them sparing with uh, the spare and we go try um, spare fishing for trout or salmon. When the smelts are coming in, uh, I make I make a snare, or we just take a dip net and we dip the smelts. So important to each need anyway, especially in Nuch. Pet is passed on with all these teachings, and it's interesting when you're passing down your teachings to the younger younger people. Huh? It's either friends, younger friends, or your children. When we went took those kids out spe uh, spearing, a lot of the other parents thank me who doesn't have a father in their life or a brother or uncle that showed their kids how to do this. So I thought it was important for me or someone from the community to pass that along to other kids. Hunting and fishing tradition, it's uh, important to it. We've been, uh, the Mi'kmaq people have been doing it since day one. And I think it should be uh, keep be, be passed down. Right now, and uh, especially with the martial decision in court, my wind is not all We will keep hunting and fishing and providing for our families and friends in our communities. It's better to harvest your own fish because, you know, it's it's fresher and, you know, you know what you're getting out of the water that you're fishing out of and stuff. And it's just better overall. And, and it's a know-how, you know, you're not incompetent to, you know, you have to go to the grocery store to go get it. You're able to, you know, feed yourself. Our people can get sick very easily by eating bad foods and processed foods and stuff that's grown in like labs. So I think traditional harvesting gives us the most pure wild food, the most healthy food that wouldn't harm us because our ancestors lived off it. So I think we're well adapted for eating wild harvested food. We as good look the same on image. If you go to the grocery stores, we doesn't go. It's more organic, you know, what we're used to our diet. Nigga squeeze no, gets no guadi jigaku ya, and that's from the grocery food stuff. Split them and it when it's it's like that, right? So when you're eating, when you're picking the berries, and you're when you're fishing real real fish, not farm fish eating the moose that you shot, you can't get any healthier than that. And I, and I think people should do that a lot, a lot more. I should see a lot more Mi'kmaq people up that mountain or in the waters. It's important because it's who we are. It's natural for me to just get up in the morning and be like, oh, okay, I'll get some breakfast and we'll get a fish. Like, it's just who we are. Here's a funny thing I heard um, from Danny Paul. And he was talking about uh, when he's Grandfather, or at Maligawatch, he went to uh, buy fishing hooks and a fishing license. And he came back, and his grandfather told him, I'll take you back to the store. His grandfather told him, what are you doing selling him a fishing license? He said, he doesn't need one. And he threw away, and he made him bring back the fishing hook and rod and everything. He took him back to Mala and told him, uh, I'll show you how to fish. He took out an eel spear and said, uh, with this tool, you're not playing with your fish. You're not doing the catch and release. You're going to eat that fish when we, when we kill it. So I think the best way to hunt for food is to kill it the most humane way would be to um, kill it real quick so that you have your food right there so you're not making the fish suffer for nothing. Mau dem gis aru spear wali pat sam a spear wali da blamu gis sometimes gis de to jo a gis yo dalko ka so when i know it's big enough and do jo a sabaka ida the spirit jo at least uh, when you're fishing with the rod this bu how you go you catch and release it right spear we know la blamu something that chance a blamu we mo ga ne be da no gis sam so swali even if it's undersized or whatever. I think it's cool to learn how to spear. And I mean, I've tried with the fishing rod and the fish 
don't bite. So I'm like, I see it. I'm just going to go grab it and take them. Because, I mean, it's it's easier, I find, than, than um, the other ways. It's our family roots. So just doing the traditional stuff that my parents and grandparents both did on both sides. It's important to me because I'm a self-sufficient person. And for me to be able to provide for myself and be able to provide for my family, um, I hope will inspire our youth that are disconnected from being able to um, experience, to bring livelihood, moderate livelihood to their homes or to their families. Well, fishing supports my family 100% right now. You know, I, I totally uh, depend on fishing whether it be commercial or traditional. I love it. I, I kind of grew up on the boat as well. My father was a fisherman. I grew up fishing with him on the weekends. It's what I love to do, so the fact that I can make a living off of fishing is my favorite part. Commercial fishing benefits community financial-wise. Uh, brings in a lot of revenue. It gives uh, people of the community jobs. Go traditionally, then we are just gathering food. But if we're going commercially, then we are going to pay our bills. We're going to feed our community and we're going to, you know, continue to thrive. I invested into uh, a core, lobster core license. I bought that my own money. That's what I do for most of my financial. Well, look at me. I'm, I'm a fisherman. That's what I do for a living. And um, like I said, I built my house for with fishing money. I took care of my, I'm taking care of my family with fishing money. Uh -huh. Gizito Damides, uh, if it wasn't the Marshall decision, I don't know what would I would do without it. So Gizito, you know, where I'd be in life without Donald going to court for our people and uh, winning, winning, uh, winning that big battle. Moderate livelihood is being being able to sustain your family, right? So, um, and your community, being able to afford everything that you need to afford all year, not just during the fishing season. Anyways, um. Proud of you, anyway, Del Olnu, and I'm a proud uh, Olnu, and um, I think people everywhere should be a proud Olnu, especially uh, the younger generation. No, the Olnu is who, then no, the Ajamaka, and the Pawa will go to Switz, practice what they go, go a lot of the Mog. We could hunt and we could fish. As of today, we can go hunting and fishing without licenses or anything like that, and I'd like, like it to be like that for our generations coming. Donald Marshall. Got the ball rolling for that. He's the he's the main man. If it wasn't for him, we would we wouldn't have the rights we do today. Yeah. Junior made paved the way for all the all the Mi'kmaq people, especially all our communities. Nigga, what job did you? Excuse you know, God, well, the fishermen, what job did you? And our bands are profiting from from him going to court for you know, how many years? Eight, them six years, Jacob court, Mashuru. But it was his troubles that nigga, I paid what or gene him way, you know. Um, I don't know how to thank him. I really don't. Be a proud owner, be a proud owner. Go Ajimaka, go to the powerhouse and then that's where do we go hunt that Ajigudame. Um just be proud, funny. I would tell our people to stay authentic and stay true to themselves. You see injustice, you stand up for someone. If you see an opportunity to learn something new, grab it. Don't be afraid to speak our language, and most importantly, don't be afraid to be Mi'kmaq. Be proud to be who you are.